Okay, welcome along once again to the Star Sports video blog, and it's York time, it's the Dante meeting. And before we carry on and crack into that, for all our followers out there, we've got to have our moment in the sun. You watched the Chester Cup video, I believe Il Zeray was the tip, Trevor, at 25 to 1, along with Golf of Naples, who came third at 7 to 1. And the main layer of the week was overturned, which was second. And as we know, second is as good as second last. And what a fantastic video that was. Anyone who watched that will be on good terms themselves. Uh, also laid the Roger Baring horse, so we'd be against that, and that was uh, beaten after about a furlong. As you um, can tell, we've not had the best time of it on the video blog lately, so we're really milking finally <laughs> putting up a big price winner. But we won't bore you to death with that. We'll move on, and we'll find you a few more big price winners. If we start on the Wednesday at York, the Group 2, one of the probably the best sprint we've had so far this year, the Duke of York sprint. And we've got a few old favourites at the top of the market. And we'll start there, Who Fit, the 4 to 1 favourite, very much become a public horse over the last couple of years, owned by famous golfer Lee Westwood and his agent Chubby Chandler, won the Stewards Cup off top weight last year, which I think we agreed was probably the most impressive handicap performance of the year. 4 to 1 favourite, Trevor, do you want to be with it? Do you want to be against it? I think we have to be against it because our clients want to be on it. Um... Admirable horse, improving, got from handicaps to Group 1 company very, very easily. Very unlucky in a sprint last year, Haydock was third in the Group 1 and uh, has leading claims here. Uh, won't mind the ground, Ryan Moore rides. We'll have to take it on because the public want to back it and we'll have to accommodate them. But uh, I think, respect I think his chance. it's won three times at York. That's York. It shows it loves it. I was surprised to see this this Ryan Moore booking. Yeah. I thought Fallon tends to be his jockey. Any any reason for that, do you know? Uh, well, Fallon does commit himself to James Fanshawe as well and uh, he'll be on Society Rock for those that yard. Um, I suppose Ryan Moore's the best in the business, however good Fallon is, and they can get Ryan Moore and have him. I'd agree with you, he's the best in the business. So what I would say is, we're 4-1 to one here, we're keen to lay it, but I'd be surprised if it didn't go much shorter on yeah. the day. So 11-4, 3-1 favourite, I would have thought. The public money will come for this, and even if you don't fancy it, I think a shrewd move is to back it anyway, because we'd be surprised here at Star Sports if it didn't go off shorter than 4-1. to one. Yeah, Moving on, we've got joint favourites in this race, and the other joint favourite is Mason. 4-1 to one shot, hat-trick seeking Mason, impressive last time out, progressive sprinter, Top trainer in form, Richard Fahey. Want to take this on? I know I do. I think this is plenty short enough for me. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. I mean, he is the swindler in form, won twice at Newmarket. Richard Fahey's always said he's a top class horse and he's looking like he's been proved right. But four to one against a course of group one form, I don't want to be against this. I think this is the one we've got to get in the book and if it wins, fair play, but uh, this is the one I want to take on. Yeah, I mean, I noticed the checker beat it earlier in the season. Yeah. We'll come on to that later. But yeah, it sort of seems like a fashionable horse at the moment for me, doesn't it? You know, it won well, everyone was on when it run, when it won a couple of times ago. It came out, won again, was impressive, but this is a big step up. You've got Hoofit, who nearly won a Group 1. Society Rock, who we'll come on to in a second, who won at Royal Ascot. For me, I don't think Mason's good enough. And at 4 to 1, I want to be top price here at Star Sports. Moving on to that horse I just mentioned, Society Rock. Trained by the skeleton himself, James Fanshawe, ridden by top jockey Kieran Fallon. Another one, surprisingly, that I'd want to be against, and I'll tell you why. This horse is so inconsistent. Scooted in at Ascot, I think, what price was it when it won at Ascot? About 20 to 1? Yeah, about 20 to 1, yeah. Comes out, second next time, when well fancy, sixth, duck egg, duck egg. I think it's too short a price of seven for a horse that's far too inconsistent. Yeah, and first time up is probably the time to catch it. Uh, Loves Ascot, runs his best races there, but even saying that, I was very surprised with the Golden Jubilee last year. Uh, that's the best we've got to offer, I think for that caviar I won't be too worried. Um, first time up this year, I'd want to be against it as well. Uh, seven to one is fair price, but um, come in, we'd like to lay that. I mean, the more we talk about it, the more you're looking towards the favourite new for it, aren't you? I mean, Mick Easterby, you know, punting yard, the owners of punters, they will have this primed and ready for this race. And looking at the next one in the market, the checker. Another horse that's, yes, it beat Mason earlier in the season, but not the most consistent of horses. And six furlongs, I remember they were trying to make this into a mile at one stage. And yeah. I think it's, let me check, yeah, 10 to 1, the checker. Plenty short enough for me as well for a horse that's fairly inconsistent. Yeah, I believe to be a Guinness horse, and Eve Johnson Horton felt it was the best horse she's ever trained. That still may be the case, uh, but kept being beat last year. and. Uh, 
If you're each way player, you probably could do worse, but not for me. Not a win, win potential win in that for me. Uh, Rope mine the soft ground and did beat Mason early in the year, but on balance, not good enough. Right, okay, moving on. Um, Roger Charlton's run, I believe he did have three ends mm -hmm. in, only one goes to post, and that's definitely who was second behind Mason last time, not beat far, and comes in here at 12 to 1. Yes, I know it's off top weight, but I think that's almost a disrespectful price, 12 to 1 for horses. Showed up a long way last time and only just got touched off really by Mason, and I think that's a decent each way price. Oh, I, think, I think you're right. Any more rain, and this will be my selection. I mean, this was heavy, I think this will win. Plus, it's run style with Suit York. It's a front runner, and they come and catch me if you can, and it just rolls along in the front. Tried that at Newmarket last time and got reeled in, but showed a tremendous game as a character, haul off a second. Well, like the course, I think, run style suits. If it rains, this has got a major chance. Yeah, I think, I think we'll agree that, you know, if ever you wanted to rely on something, the rain is probably what you could rely yeah, on in England. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's embarrassing how much it's raining at the moment. I was at Chester and it didn't stop, and it shows no sign of stopping at the moment. The only other thing I would say is, I like the jockey booking. This young James Doyle is really, really beginning to make an impression. Fantastic young jockey. Um, and I think it's a wonderful booking. And I'd be surprised if this wasn't one that ran a decent, decent race at a big price. Um, we won't go through all the runners, Joe, but is there anything else down the list that you want to touch on? Uh, Lebrano is worth a mention. High still, class. still in my thunder once yeah, again. Yeah, high class two year old. Um, didn't have a great year last year, did manage to win, uh, but lots of good two-year-olds struggle in their third year and then come good against four-year-olds. Lots of pace this, and I think the track will suit. 16 to one, could do worse. Yeah, no, I, I was uh, actually gonna come on to this Lebron. I was there when it when it ran impressively and it won its, uh, I think it was a group two, it, it, it won at Goodwood when it was a two-year-old. Yeah. Went on, came fourth at Royal Ascot, um, behind Margot did and a couple of others. Ran an impressive race, but, like you said, some of the, sometimes these three-year-olds have a difficult time of it. The Hannon Yard's firing, and it just looks 16 to 1 looks a big price for me. And they're the two I'd want to be with each way, definitely at 12s and Lebron at 16s. Yeah, I wouldn't argue with that. I want to be against Mason in the office. Uh, we're keen to take that on. Uh, Rope Mine Lane Society Rock. Uh, good betting race. Um, who if it won't be a loser because the punters love it. But I'd quite agree with your Yeah, no, look, I'll just have a little touch on our anti post book here. And I've noticed that we laid Mason quite heavily at mm -hmm. six to one. That was before, before the, the, uh, the declarations came out, so people were keen to get on that early. Other than that, it's not really big a big, big anti post betting heat. The prices tend to come out a little bit later. So, although Mason is our anti post loser, we'd be keen to get it again here at Star Sports. We're four to one, that's joint top price anywhere in the country, and we'll hold it up as long as we can. I think the main thing to come out of the race is who fit at four to one can't possibly go off that price. I'd even like to have a bet that it goes off shorter than three to one. So if you're looking for an angle, from a betting point of view, my main my main advice to you would be take the four to one who fit. Yeah, it's pretty sound advice. I mean it's a public horse with a public jockey on um, leading claims in a group one form back in a group two. I think it's got a lot better form than Mason and uh, of the two favourites and one we'd like to be with. Yeah, and if you can get a match bet, um, we'll price it up for you here at Star Sports. As I always say, if there's anything you want that you can't find, always give us a call and we'll price it up. But I think that'd be a brilliant match bet, yeah. who fit to beat Mason. Enough banging on about who fit. We'll quickly touch on the Moussadora Stakes, which is on Wednesday as well. That's a great Oaks trial. Although there's not many prices yet for this small six runner in York, which doesn't look a great race to me, Trevor. There's two horses in here, and their prices for the Oaks are the Fugue is 12 to 1 for the Oaks, and Twirl is 16 to 1 for the Oaks. But in terms of the race itself, Trevor, any angles? Well, the Fugue has only had two races. It won on its debut at Newmarket, uh, went to Newmarket at the 1,000 guineas, very green. It was second last with about two farms to go, and stayed on really nicely. And John Gosden, well, if anyone can train a horse, bring it on nicely, he's the man. Well backed on the day of food as well, that seems to be. Yeah, I mean, I think they like the horse. Uh, it doesn't, it hasn't settled its race yet. It still came um, fourth in 1,000 guineas and won its uh, maiden. If it can learn to settle, and it'll need to to get this trip, I think it uh, goes to the Oaks with a chance, actually. I, yeah. th I think this will win, uh, win on Wednesday. I think we are agreed. You'd rather take a sort of short price about it to win the Moussa Dorba and rather take the 12 to 1 to win the Oaks, because if it wins this impressively, which in this small, fairly uncompetitive field, that could look like a big price. No, I agree, I agree. I think it's got much stronger claims than 12. 
I think 12 is fancy because of its connections and every time they send a horse over it runs a big race. I'm not sure her form's great, her reappearance run wasn't particularly good. I think Fugue is the one to be against her and now you can back up the Oaks now, I think you have a lot sure on the day. Yeah, by all means do call, if you fancy backing it to win the race and winning the Oaks, of course on the day here at Star Sports we'll have a price for the double. Yeah. And that for the Moosadora and the Oaks would probably be my main tip. Yeah, I think so. I mean at the moment the trading board has about 18 to 1 chance and uh, we'll lay that. Uh, and I think you could do worse but I think it win on Wednesday and you've got 18 to 1 for the Oaks and but you could do worse. Uh, 12 is 33 to do that double. Right, okay. Moving on to the main event, the Dante on the Thursday. This big group two, I think it's 60,000 to the winner. This is the race they all want to win. They used to say, if you don't win the Dante, you don't win the Derby. And that got blown clean out of the water last year, I believe it was. Is that correct? Year before. Year before, indeed. So let's start at the top of the market. Bonfire has been a popular favourite here. This would be our massively our biggest loser in the anti post, but we've laid 11 to 4, we've laid 5 to 2. It's now five, 9 to 4 favourite. It was unlucky in France when it ran last time, only getting touched off by French 15, who then went on, as you know, and came second in the 2000 Guineas. And for me, I'd be very fearful of this horse. Yeah, it's uh, time for a good British cult to come forward and shake up the Derby betting, really. Uh, desperate for one, really, to take on Camelot. And uh, Bonfire has won the obvious credentials. Second favourite for the Derby. Just the two runs. It's made when it saws he's working out OK. Unlucky in France. And, but more, what was it doing in the Group 1 second time? Obviously, Connections think this is a very good horse. And they can know the time they're the balling oh. yard. They're a good punting yard. You know, oh, they've sure. got top, top horses. And for that to go and run in the Group 1, yeah. as you said, second time. And be unlucky. I mean, you want to crap it a little bit, there was a lot of horses finishing close together at the end, but this was the one that got repeatedly denied a run, and uh, I know they think this is the best horse potentially from, from that yard for a long time. Uh, Miss Chester was a desperate ground. Uh, maybe Miss York is desperate, but I think it'd be better going there. And I think this is a genuine favourite for this race, and hopefully a genuine derby contender for, for the Brits. Um, 20 to 1 to. Uh, to do the double, it'll be 20 to 1. Yeah, that's correct, it's 20 to 1. We'll come on to a few of those specials later, but if you fancy this bonfire, once again, short price of this race at 9 to, short price at nine to 4, 20 to 1 to win this and the derby could look a very appealing price after this race is done. And, you know, like we say, this Camelot is a massive anti post loser for us and probably every other firm yeah. in the country. So we'll be cheering everything on against that we possibly can. But moving further down the Dante card, Three to one second favourite, Mandian, the Godolphin runner. I noticed both their runners in the Guineas ran terribly, not had the best of form over the last week or so. This has come over from France, not had a run this season. Looks plenty short enough for me, three to one. Yep, I uh, tend to agree. Trained by Andre Farb last year for the Godolphin French um, annex. Um, unbeaten, one was a three horse race, the other one was a pretty low class race. I think it's very short. Lay for me. Massive lay. Come on Not in. had a run. Three one, please. Come on in. Uh, Frank de Tory, Mohamed Al Zarouni. They've got a great record at Dante. They could have got the Dolphin. Or they always target their best, or they think their best cult for the race. But we want to take this on. We really do. Yeah, we're top price man in anywhere in the world here at Star Sports. Three to one. Not had a run this season. Not sure about French two yard form. And for us, we want to get that in the book as quickly as we possibly can. Moving on to the Irish raider Ernest Hemingway from the popular O'Brien Bally Doyle's Connections. I noticed Trevor, this has had one run in a Dundalk Maiden and it's 5 to 1 third favour for the Dante. That can't have ever happened before. The most unusual yeah. route to take. Is it a class horse or is it priced up on Connections? Well, definitely priced up on Connections. Um, bred to be a class horse. They've got 25 runners to enter for the Derby, Valley Dog, and uh, they've got an embarrassment of riches in the three year old division. I suppose that's the point, isn't it? They've got 25 entrants mm. to the Derby, and this is the one thing they're sending over for the Dante. No matter what we think, we have to respect oh, that. Oh, you have to, because you know, they could have several others that have had good form claims have come here with leading chances. They've selected this as their runner, and on that alone, you'd have to respect it. But as a layer, 5 to 1 horse that won 34 days, days ago on its debut at Dundalk. <laughs> oh, we've really got to We're going to make you look stupid here, yeah, so you should sure. probably move on, but that looks plenty short enough at 5 yeah, to 1. Ektiham, 6 to 1, 4th favourite for Mr. Roger Varian. 
Um, I noticed he's not got a derby entry, so this, this could in a way maybe be his, his FA Cup final, the race that's been targeted for all season. And that could be a massive advantage if you're targeting this race. Some of these might have the derby as their main focus. But that's completely right. In these trials, often people are looking for the horse that's shortest for the classic. But this is good money, you know, good money to be won here. It's group two race in its own right. This horse surprised people last time at Newbury, beat Rotham Heath, who's been pulled out of this. Um, I think the point to make is if it did win, I think Mr. Hampton can afford to suck them out, don't you? I'm sure it'll happen, but uh, I don't think it'll stay uh, any further than 10, personally. No. I think it might struggle with the extended uh, 10 here. Uh, one would want to lay, I really do want to lay this. I think the form at Newbury's poor. Not certain to get home. If they go strong clip, I think it'll struggle. And level or two, plenty short enough. For so me. we're top price Mandy in here at Star Sports 3 to 1. We're top price 6 to 1 about Ektahan. One we're not top price about, and my fancy for the race is Noble Mission. Half brother to Frankel. As you know, I love a trend, and this is the only one that fits every criteria. You're looking for horses one last time out, and won a race this season. It's had uh, one over further than a mile and it's also won a group or a listed race. And I noticed this horse has ticked every single box. It's as big as sevens in some places, and it's as short as fours. For a race of this calibre, that's highly unusual. So it just shows to me people can't get, quite get a grasp on it. But without a doubt, the bet for me in the race, 11 to two, is no more mission. Uh, I don't really agree, not to be honest, uh, but there you go. I'd want to be 11 to two, I'd like to six, but the trade boys I think that's 11 to two is <laughs> fair enough. Uh, unlike Frank, well, this has uh, been off the bridle lots of times in its races, and you have to like the way it battles. Uh, look, beat at Newmarket, very game, kept on coming through. And uh, Henry Cecil, his run of the Dante, respect on that alone. Uh, for me, the form isn't great, and uh, I'd be keen to lay it for this. Uh, we're 66 this to win the double, and uh, I'd like to lay it personally, I know you don't agree. But, you know, we've got to all agree. I just love a fighter. I love yeah, a horse yeah, that fighter. keeps stacking his neck out. It almost feels like, you know, the horse knows your money's down. He keeps battling for you. I mean, like I always say to you, Serena Williams is a person I love because she keeps fighting. This horse is that kind of a horse. Head down, battle, battle. One comes up alongside, cruising on the bridle. It doesn't matter if you come there cruising, it's what you find. And a horse that keeps finding is one that I always want to be with. And like I said, that would be my selection. Time will tell. The only one other one I think we should touch on near the top of the market is John Gosden's fencing, who showed up very well for a long way in the Guineas, finishing fourth, I believe, and interesting price, seven to one, interesting runner. Yeah, other than Bonfire, this for me is the most likely winner. It's actually sick from the Guineas, but uh, it was a good effort, and there was lots of money for it, a lead up to the race, you know, big prices, they've been working really well at Newmarket. I think at seven to one, this is the value of the race for me. I mean, it's backing up fairly quick, 12 days from Newmarket. It's a big price for Derby, for Derby, so it suggests that this might be its race rather than yeah, a race. Uh, so the impression that this Dante is not just a trial, this is a race they want to win. And I said, again, the prize money is excellent. Uh, this would be my selection as a value pick, uh, but Bonfire would be my main pick. Okay, so anything at a massive price you want to mention, there's nothing down the bottom that takes my eye at all? No, I totally agree. I think we've covered it. If we haven't covered the winner, then we have to... <laughs> we'll look at ourselves. So we're agreed, Bonfire is our biggest anti-post liability, mm -hmm. it is the one we fear most and probably, boringly enough, the most likely winner. And the two that we're going to put up against it, I'm a big Noble Mission fan, Trevor here is a big fencing fan, and if you're a fan of one of these to win the Dante and win the Derby, we're 20 to 1 Bonfire to do the double, 33 is Mandian to do the double, 66 Noble Mission to do the double, and 66 Ernest Hemingway to do the double. But whatever you fancy at York, all the best. Like I always say, please come use us, try us, see what you think, see how you like our phone manner. We'll do everything we can to take care of you and make the York experience as pleasurable as possible. And if there is a match bet, or if there is anything like a double or an enhanced double you're looking for, call us, because we're always willing to make up a market wherever possible. But with whatever you back, from me and Trevor, all the best of luck.